and you can see this. Uh, I've already cleaned up the cylinder head. Uh, I'm going to cut the valve guide for the seals here using our handy dandy little tool right there. Now you're going to have to make sure the guides are clean and put a little bit of lube in the guide because it'll draw the end from running it in here. And you don't really need a uh, lube on the outside because it's cast iron. Cast iron is pretty soft. And this is cutting them for uh, 530 thousandths. Uh, you don't need to take off as far as too deep on this thing. And all you're going to do is stick the pilot in there and get it started. Use variable speed drill, and you're just going to cut down so it's flat on the top there. A little bit more than that should be good. It's perfect right there. A little bit of bevel on the edge there for the seal to go around. And if you're doing, that, you know, this is a stock rebuild, so I'm not really concerned about valve uh, seal clearance or collar to seal clearance on it. I already know it's way more than what what it should be. If you are, what you'd want to do is measure the pop of seal on there with the valve in. Stick the top uh, spring retainer on with the keeper groove and the, with the keepers and then just measure from the guide here to the top minus the minus the seal and that's your distance and then ultimately you want about at least 80 to 100 thousandths clearance between the collar and the seal uh, like I said, this is stock sock lift, stock build, so we don't really care about that. Uh, this is using an 11 32nd pilot. Now, you can use this on other valve guides because this pilot comes out, so you can get a 5 16th pilot, a 7 millimeter pilot, or a 3 8 pilot. And it's 530 thousandths around. Uh, spring pads on this thing look good. Uh, they're nice and flat. We're not really concerned about that too much. Let me go ahead and cut this one here. Looks good right there. And then you're just going to go down the row and do the rest of them. And then clean it. Uh, uh, I'm going to blow this off and probably spray it off with some brake clean before I reseat the valves. And then you're going to really clean this thing. Probably I'll clean this thing just like I did before. I'll blow it out with air. Then uh, probably wash it in diesel or kerosene. I use diesel because it's a little bit cheaper here. And then. Uh, Blast it with a little handheld pressure washer gun there with some soap. And then I'll wash it in hot soapy water for a final time. And use your after you're done with this, use a board rush through theirs and just when you're doing the hot water, just clean it out really good down through your guides. When you're cutting this, you'll feel when it stops because it'll take more pressure to cut it. Use a variable speed drill on these. You can't really control it with a non variable speed, you'll end up tearing the damn, tearing your cutter bits up.
And that's it for those there. That's all eight of them. Like I said, clean it really good. I still got a couple. I got to reseat the valves on it. And then go through and clean everything again. Be sure to brush everything out. Get all in your uh, cool, all the orifices in the head, not just the ports, but all the, where the cooling system holes are inside the casting there. Blow those out really good. Just wash and wash and wash. If you have any open open holes from where you blasted it or cleaned it, uh, probably drawing a thread chaser down through them. Be sure to blow those things out good. Uh, and final step on this, I'll stone this thing. It's got a couple of uh, casting marks on the outside here and on the head gasket surface. And you're just going to use a stone on those. Let me show you what I mean. Uh, chambers are all clean here. If you, if you run your finger on here, I can feel some marks like right there. If you're not going to carry it to be surfaced, if you don't have a local machine shop or you're a cheap bastard, I don't have a surface grinder anymore. I used to have one. Or do it in the bridge port on the table, but. I don't, I don't even know what the charging machine shop to do them now. So we're just going to do it the uh, backyard homemade way. These are a nice big stone here. And just go. Uh, Kind of a little circular motion. Maybe you'll feel some parts on there where you got high spots in them. It's not the perfect way to do it, but it works in the backyard. And then I'll do this after cleaning everything up. I'll go over it really good where I can see it. After it's cleaned really good, that's basically it. And then I'll do the top side too. Make sure your uh, area where your manifold is. Now, if you got a straight edge, lay a straight edge across the head and measure it. Make sure you ain't got a big bow in the thing. This thing wasn't leaking. And uh, it had never been apart before, as far as I could tell. Uh, but if you're unsure, if, if you measure it and you got, say, you got eight or nine thousandths clearance with the feeler gauge up under the straight edge, and you know you'd want to measure it lengthwise, probably here, here, and here. And then the same thing down the cylinder head, you'd want to measure it up and down. On each side of the port there, or each side of the chamber, like here, 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 and here. And if you got any kind of wacky numbers in there, you probably want to have it surfaced. Same thing with the uh, manifold area here. Although you're more likely to have a, a warped manifold than you are a warped head as far as where the manifold goes on. I still got a bead the manifold there and paint it and clean up the clean up the surface on that thing but that's about it for cutting the guides next I'll reseat the valves and check it after and then clean clean everything again and hopefully rod bolts will be in by then so we can get this thing back together by Christmas all right, thank you.
nice little chili out here today. If you have any questions, comments, if you like it, subscribe, hit the like button, hit the notification bell, all that stuff, and uh, we'll go on from there. Everybody have a good weekend. Watch out for crazy people out there shopping. It's Saturday after Thanksgiving. I went out this morning to get some stuff real quick. And uh, every place I passed was packed. A lot of people out this year compared to last year. But it is what it is. Just watch out for them. They're texting and whatever they're doing. I don't know. All right, that's it for this one. Thank you. There, there's my ugly mug there. I'm just uh, uh, probably going and eat and maybe take a nap in a little bit, waiting for somebody to come and pick up, drop off the bike and pick up a bike later on. We'll see. They show up at a decent hour.